Imagine a web company struggling with website failure that can strike anytime, and overworked teams stretched to their limit just to keep things from falling apart. And now add communication problems with global teams into all of this, and what do you get? A disaster in the making, where no one has the time or energy to innovate or be productive, and everyone wants to play blame games. A knee-jerk solution to this would be to bring in external consultants or create new DevOps teams. But unless you fix the internal issues, this will only make things more confusing. So what do we do? Welcome back to our channel. And today we're going to review the book with tips to tackle every tricky DevOps situation there is. Even better, it tells you how to prevent them from happening in the first place. Effective DevOps, true to its title, the book shares the most effective strategies to build a culture of collaboration. It teaches you to tap into the human factors, to create high-performing teams. With this video, we continue our series on DevOps books that should be part of your reading list. If you've missed our previous book reviews, we've got them right here as a playlist List. Just click on the link on the side to catch up. Now, Effective DevOps was written by Jennifer Davis and Rin Daniels and published in 2016. The idea was to get down to the nuts and bolts of building a DevOps culture and to show that transformations should happen internally first instead of bringing in external specialists. It does have DevOps in the title, but this book isn't just for technology professional. It's a practical guide for any manager or individual, no matter what level, for implementing DevOps or improving organizational culture. Now, I really liked how this book is split into multiple parts. The first part Part starts with the big picture of DevOps, and then you have the collaboration, affinity tools, and scaling section. And finally, you bring it all together into the last section. And this book is like one of those choose your own adventure books. You can read it in whichever order you want, and it will still make sense. So we've spoken a lot about DevOps on this channel, but what exactly is effective DevOps? So here's a great quote by Peter Drucker, one of the most influential leaders ever. Drucker says, efficiency is doing the thing right, and effectiveness is doing the right thing. The same two words in different orders with two completely different meanings. With the help of this book, you can identify all the right things to achieve organizational goals. And these can be any short-term or long-term objectives related to culture, processes, or tools. Now, Davis and Daniels don't just hand out a one-size-fits-all solution because let's face it, every organization is unique. And what works for one business may not work for another but they do share four pillars for implementing DevOps effectively that can be easily adapted for any business from private to public sector, small startups to large MNCs, and across roles. They've also shared plenty of examples to help us understand that people and processes can influence software and tools in more ways than one. But before getting into the four pillars, the book takes some time out to bust the most common myths about DevOps, and I'm gonna share a few of these here. So myth number one, DevOps only involves developers and operations people or sysadmins. This is perhaps one of the biggest myths of floating around. In reality, the term DevOps only refers to how the movement was started. Now, DevOps can be applied to every type of organization and involve job roles from across sales to legal teams. Myth number two, DevOps is only related to web startups. As I mentioned earlier, DevOps principles can be easily applied to any organization across industries. Large organizations are more likely to be burdened with legacy perspectives and platforms which stifle innovation and experimentation, so arguably they are more in need of DevOps than a startup. So thinking that DevOps is only relevant for web startups couldn't be further from the truth. Myth number three, there is one right way or one wrong way to do DevOps. And that's not true. DevOps is not one size fits all. There may be unicorns like Netflix and Etsy whose successes might seem like they've got everything figured out. But strategies that worked for them may not work for you. You need to create a culture of learning and experimentation. DevOps also involves questioning processes and tools that don't work for you and getting them replaced. It may also involve letting go of entrenched perspectives on how things have been done and how they could be improved. Myth number four, DevOps is all about tools. This misguided belief that DevOps involves applying a specific set of tools or carrying out drastic changes makes larger organizations feel that DevOps is not for them. They think it is more suited for startups. This is not true. DevOps is a cultural movement that involves assessing the current tools and processes and changing only those that aren't working for you in smaller increments. So if a particular process or pipeline isn't working, maybe we try changing one tool at a time instead of throwing the whole tool set away. And finally, we come to myth number five, DevOps is about automation. 
Yes, improving efficiency and eliminating repetitive tasks with automation is crucial to DevOps, but that's not all. It is so much more than that. The authors also say that automation is only effective if it also adds to collaboration and transparency in the organization. I could also argue that automation that removes repetitive work or toil is also essential to free us up from more complex and human-centered tasks. So let's talk about the four pillars of effective DevOps. The DevOps guru, Patrick Dubois, has called it a human problem, meaning that every organization already has a DevOps culture unique to it. It's also another way of saying that there's no one right way of doing DevOps. That's why this book shares the four common themes or pillars of effective DevOps. And any team or organization seeking an effective, sustainable change should work on all four. Pillar number one is collaboration. Two heads are better than one. For successful DevOps transformations, you need a better understanding and effective communication, not just between different teams, but also within every team. In DevOps, collaboration refers to asynchronous code reviews, documentation, demonstrating weekly progress, and pairing. Getting people to do all this more effectively than before helps align goals and create value for the customer. Pillar number two is affinity. Affinity measures how strong the relationship are between individuals, teams, and organizations. Things like navigating challenges, solving conflicts, celebrating wins, and sharing stories bring people together. Improving affinity helps in reducing processing or cycle time, removing communication issues, and building trust. A culture of trust and collaboration in turn encourages risk-taking and innovation. And pillar number three is tools. Earlier in the video, we discussed how DevOps is not limited to just tools. Yes, tools related to software development, automation, and monitoring are important to DevOps, but their effectiveness depends on the organization's culture. Let's just say that tools are accelerators that drive change. That's why the tooling choices should be made keeping in mind the current culture of the company. If certain tools hamper learning and collaboration between teams, then they'll not work. And the fourth and final pillar is scaling. Scaling is the growth of an organization throughout its entire life cycle. It can be anything from expanding the customer base to growing faster than competitors. Needless to say, scaling is not easy. Even in your organization, you may have encountered obstacles to growth plans. In the section on scaling, the authors share cultural and technical factors and how the pillars of effective DevOps help in solving various scaling problems. Another section that grabbed my attention was about different mindsets and how they influence our ability to learn and grow. Different mindsets can affect how people or organizations tackle challenges and deal with failures. In her research, award-winning American psychologist Carol S. Dweck found two types of mindsets. These are the fixed mindset and the growth mindset. Like the name suggests, individuals with a fixed mindset believe that you're either born with certain talents and abilities or you're not they are fixed and can't change. These folks are pretty competitive and always want to prove that they fall into the smart category. People with fixed mindsets have a fear of failure and tend to stay away from challenges that require learning new skills. On the other hand, we have people with growth mindsets who actively seek out new growth and learning opportunities. They know knowledge can evolve and new skills can be learned and mastered with practice. And they are risk takers who see failures as opportunities to learn. Now, what about organizations? How can you tell if your organization has a fixed mindset? Well, for starters, you'll constantly find them defending their way of working as my way or the highway. The company won't welcome changes and might believe that DevOps is only for companies like Netflix and Etsy. Now, the rigidity of an organizational mindset is because many people working there have the same fixed mindset. So to help tackle this, the authors share some pointers to help transition to a growth mindset, like using small frequent wins to build confidence and break old habits and addressing the biggest pain points instead of executing large scale changes in an organization. There are many more tips, but you'll have to pick up the book to know what they are. Now I'm gonna talk about my favorite section of this book. It speaks about the common misconceptions. The first of which is that you can't teach an old sysadmin new tricks. Do you feel that the system administrator in your organization can't collaborate in a cross-functional environment? Think again. The old school veteran sysadmin might not fit the description of a young and dynamic techie, but it's wrong to assume that someone older than you is not as flexible when it comes to learning. Give these guys the time and necessary upscaling and reskilling resources and wait for the magic to happen. And if you're one of those worried about uh, your skill set. Uh, becoming obsolete, know this, as long as you're keeping up with new technologies, there will always be work for you. 
The key is finding an organization or a team that is the right fit. Another misconception is that as long as an employee is technically brilliant, it is okay if they behave like a jerk. Now, we've always heard the trope of the brilliant but antisocial engineer, you know, where someone's contributions are so good that it's worth tolerating their terrible behavior. But let's take a moment and think about what we're doing here. Should we be okay with such a person treating people like garbage just because he or she is a tech genius? Or should we pause and reflect on the very real impact their negative behaviors can have on others' productivity and motivation? Such people might make life a living hell for their teams and, and even force them to quit. Would you be willing to ignore the damage being done to other team members and to your culture? In most cases, the consequences of ignoring such problematic behavior, no matter how brilliant the person is, is just not going to be worth it. Keep that in mind when the next time you're wondering if you should hire someone you think that is smart, but also kind of an asshole. So the time has come to wrap up this book review. To sum up, Effective DevOps is an awesome book to have on your shelf because I think that the tips and learnings in the book can be applied to any kind of business and will stay relevant for a long time to come. For more insights, I recommend you grab a copy for yourself. If you liked this video, please click the like button and share your thoughts in the comments section below. We've got many more reviews coming up on DevOps and DevSecOps in the future, so make sure to press the bell icon and subscribe to our channel. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.